Hello, everyone. We are coming in to have a juicy conversation. So welcome. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Gigi. And I'm Alara Sage. <laughs> and we, we have this conversation that's really kind of ringing true on lots of levels about identity that we were chatting about um, the other day. And we felt this was a really powerful conversation to have and share. And also to like ask for your participation as well when you watch it, like being able to share like maybe your stories about identity and what we kind of dive into, because it's always really lovely to have that kind of feedback and conversation so that then we can kind of deep dive into like what it means for each of us as women, because I feel like this identity question and we're going to be talking kind of, I'm sure it will flow in different ways, but mainly about um, how we express ourselves and how we express ourselves with clothing, because this is something that I've always been passionate about since I was a kid. Um, and I know that a lot of us, you know, start off like that as, as children and then maybe we kind of lose it or maybe we forget and whether that's a job or if we're having to like you know um fit into some kind of box <laughs> that society is offering us that we can lose our identity and also we can kind of change as well it's not like identity is just this one thing it's also fluid and it can be fun to play with and so yeah we wanted to kind of dive into this conversation yeah and I think it's so interesting Gigi how you say how you've always had that since you were a kid because I feel like I've had a really different experience so maybe I had it as a kid I don't really remember but I recall not really having any sense of identity for most of my life and particularly through clothes um and even like in middle school, at that point, I was just so super involved with horses. And I just honestly didn't care. I just wanted to be with horses all day long. But I wore just jeans and like oversized t-shirts. And, you know, I think I was hiding, right? I was like hiding under the clothing. And so watching myself over the years move through these different layers of myself and how that has come more and more into this expression through the clothing that really lights me up and feels so good. I wish I could go back to my middle school and like help that version of me feel that because I didn't feel that. Oh, love that. There's also something that, you know, your jeans and your t-shirt could have been your vibe then. Do you know what I mean? Like sometimes it feels like we look back and think, oh, I wish that version of me could have been different. Or I know sometimes I have that. And then it's like, oh, no, but that was also part of just, like, the process. And also the, yeah. the horses. I love that you were just into horses because I was very into horses. And there's that kind of connection of, like, them being your identity. Is that kind of how you felt with the horses? Yeah, I don't I didn't feel like myself in what I wore. I didn't feel like myself uh, the, in school and all of that. I felt like that was all like something I just had to show up for. And so I really feel like even and I connect to that energetically that I was really hiding beneath the clothes because to me where I wanted to be, where my space was, where my identity was was absolutely with the horses. And I found at that time, I mean, even high school, I found to be very like overwhelming socially for me. I was very late bloomer socially uh, with regards to that. So it was a lot of just like, I'm just going to use these clothes to just hide, you know, rather than really, yeah, I just remember not being connected to any of it. I literally remember just going and like, just buying a bunch of like almost the same thing just to have clothes. Mm. So fascinating to hear that because I feel for me I feel like I hid in the expression which is interesting mm. like the other way around so the clothes because I felt free that was kind of where I felt free was in the expression of my clothes that I kind of 
was like, well, this is me, you know, then I became kind of more focused on the clothes and maybe less about like other stuff. So it's interesting how it can like, you can hide in maybe a more overt way <laughs> or hide in a more introverted way. And I feel like, yeah, like with art in general for me, because clothes for me have always been art, like that's mm. how I, that was my sort of comfort blanket. Mm. Mm. I love how we're like literally bringing like the very opposite <laughs> energies forward. Yeah. And, you know, then we were talking the other day about how we both transform through this. And, and I've seen a lot of my clients transform through this where as they've, you know, really acknowledged more of their unique self and who are they innately from a soul level in mm -hmm. human form they really desire to shift their clothing. They literally go out and seek something different clothing wise. And it's that same thing. It's like that feeling when, when you put that on and it lights you up and it feels, I always say it feels like home. And I find it really interesting that as we understand more of ourselves as divinity in human form, we can start to really want to express differently and maybe not, you know, the ways that we have thought we needed to express or the ways that we've taken on. Like I live in Colorado and I was telling Gigi, there's a lot of people that just wear like this very Colorado attire, which isn't wrong or right, but it's, it's definitely like everybody's kind of matching, you know? And I would be curious, just truly curious if everybody started connecting to that unique genius within themselves, if they would still desire to wear that. Yeah, it's, it's so fascinating, isn't it? How our external weaves into our internal and our internal weaves into our external and how when we're kind of wanting a change, the best way to shift things, and I always say this to, to any women that women that I work with, is like go change something of yeah, yes. of your clothing or whatever yeah. it is you're putting on your body, because that will help you yeah. explore your internal more. So even if you're not sure and you're like, I don't really know what my identity is or my style, just do something to shift it. So go and get drawn to a color because I know that color for me has been a really healing wearing mm -hmm. different colors, wearing mm -hmm. pink, which mm -hmm. never, I would, I would never oh wear pink. I thought I ever was, like even when I was young, I think I wasn't really into pink. I was into like every other color, but I don't really ever remember wearing pink. And then I went through this phase and it's interesting because it, it correlates with working with cacao so mm. heart medicine I was then like pink 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 and so then I was just buying all this like fluorescent pink not even like you know baby <laughs> pink like fluorescent pink and then I was kind of like walking around being like this is bringing me so much joy and then I would see how it would affect other people as well and then mm. being like wow I just love that you're wearing pink and you know just the way that color also informs how we feel and also on a vibrational level, um, you know, lifts our frequency and also activates our, sh our sh chakras. It's mm -hmm. like there are so many layers to it, um, which I find fascinating. And sometimes, you know, I'm wearing green today. I find, and we've definitely had this conversation before, like, oh, I'm wearing green today. That's because I'm feeling like I want to, I want to like ground or I want some nature energy mm. or I'm going to wear black because I feel mm -hmm. you know, like I'm in a kind of moody um, <laughs> energy or red because I'm feeling, mm. you know, sensual or like I want to kind of activate my, yeah, sexuality. Yeah, that's super interesting about the pink because I was like anti-pink. Uh, because of the whole, like girls wear pink and boys wear blue. I was like, 
screw you. I don't agree with that at all. Uh, and I remember I, in high school, I worked at this skateboard shop and I had the reps would always send me free stuff. And this rep sent me this free skateboard, which was super cool. But he, there was like pink screws and I like flipped to my lid. I was like, <laughs> I called him up and I was like, I am not just because I'm a girl. I don't want to be. So they like sent me like new screws. So I was just like, ah. And then I watched myself specifically when working, since I've been working with the mother who is representative of that pink energy, that pink has felt really good to me. But that was only when I really started to work with her and open up to her that I was like, oh my God, I was really desiring that pink in my life. And ironically enough, both my boys, that's their favorite color. Mm. It's so interesting because also I always suggest people go to what they're like repulsed by. Mm. <laughs> like if you're repulsed by a color, go find out what that repulsion is because it's normally something that is going to like lead you to some kind of like realization or healing and I know that 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 definitely happened for me with pink and now I just embrace all shades of pink and I love it and I don't really feel afraid of color anymore whereas there was a time where and I think it's because you you stand out if you wear bright colors and sometimes I, I still feel like not every day I feel like I want to wear a bright color because of like, you know, how I'm feeling internally and that reflects um, externally. But I know that kind of receiving all the bright colors and just kind of being accepting and kind of excited and inspired by all the colors def- definitely made me feel more uh vibrant I feel Mm. just as a being just as a human yeah and I feel like it's I mean I love how you say you know telling uh, the clients to move towards what's just uncomfortable I feel like you know we all truly have you know a, a style and identity something that really feels good to us whether we're connected to that or not which again I wasn't before and I've worked with a lot of women who aren't or think that they are, you know, and then as we do the work, it's like, oh, this doesn't feel like me anymore, or I want something more. And, you know, they want, basically, I feel like what we want is we, we want to take up more space, don't we? We want to extend out and expand out. And so that can be wearing more vibrant colors that can be wearing things that are nice, right? Just because instead of like, oh, I can't wear this. It's too nice for whatever you're doing and just wear it because it feels really good. And hey, guess what? Yeah, you're going to be looked at. You're going to be noticed, right? Maybe you stand out like a sore thumb because everybody else is in jeans and tank top and you're in this elaborate dress. And like, we get to say yes to that, right? And we get to say like, but this is like what right now I just feel so called to put this on and rock it and love it. And to keep saying yes to that, we get to do that. And, and the feeling of that in our bodies. Right. And I think it goes both ways. Like initially it can really light us up and we're like, yes. And then maybe we get into that room where everybody's like, oh my gosh, And you feel that like, oh, was this too much? Am I too much? Am I taking up too much space? Now look, everybody's looking at me, right? And being able to really be with that in ourselves and say, okay, I'm listening to the version of me that's like, you're taking up too much space. What are you doing? You just want to be seen, right? Like you just, you just want everybody to look at you and be like, no, this is, I hear you and I'm receiving that. But like, this is what literally lit my body up. And so today, this is what I'm wearing. You know, it reminds me a lot of like, I see so many kids now and I love this that are like, you know, little girls who are wearing like these, you know, goddess costumes and fairy costumes and like boys who are wearing costumes too. They're wearing them out, you know, to, to the store and they wear them to school. Like that would have never happened when I was a kid. Like, that's like, like, no, you do that on Halloween. Like, what are you thinking? And they're just like, no, I want to wear this. And like, we're creating that space for that self-expression now. For sure. It's so funny that you say all of that because 
those feelings of, oh, I'm taking up too much space have been my whole life because of wearing what I want and kind of feeling and sitting with that part of me that is wanting to dampen that inner mm-hmm. child, that joy and that spirit and that just lushness of being like, this is what I want to wear and I'm just kind of bubbling up with with just um, contentment as well. It's more kind of like I'm just content in myself. Mm. And that is a lot of what I've had to work with over the years is just giving myself permission over and over and over and over again until it really integrated into me. This is, yeah, this is how I like to express myself and I'm not going to apologize for that. Like, no, why should I? I'm going to enjoy myself and hopefully that radiates out to other people and I'm going to really anchor into that. And I just love when I see other people doing it. Mm -hmm. It's like I get so excited and I love telling people that I love what they're wearing because, again, it's kind of like, you know, you're just spreading this good energy where it's like you're saying, I see you which I think is just really powerful for us as humans to kind of receive that from one another. So I also um, like to spread that. And also with kids, when they do the same thing, as you're saying, like go into the supermarket and they're like dressed up as a cowboy or something. I just get so (laughs) happy. I'm like, yes, 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 yes. Yes. And I feel like one of the reasons that I've always been scared to take up space is because there's been this belief, well, like let's use the example of of dressing up and and dressing up really nice and really being seen now, like there's this expectation of me, right? Like now I have to entertain or be whatever it is. And that was a huge one for me to unravel of just being able like, no, I get to just be it and show up. And that doesn't mean I have to do anything. Like it reminds me one day we're at the mall and this guy had these really just wonderful pants with these these frills along the side. And I was like, Oh, Danny. And and I didn't even point. I was just like, look that guy. I I love his pants. And Danny and I both looked over the guy at the same time. And he looked over at us and then he did this like shake and he got all like the frills, like shaking. I remember thinking to myself, that's so beautiful that in that moment, he's like, yeah, like, look at my pants, you know? And I feel like that was the fear of when I would dress up in things like, oh, well now I have to do that. You know, now I have to shake my ass or, you know, it was never really like that, but like now I have to entertain or be that. Whereas as I've unraveled it and just been like, no, I just get to like, enjoy the experience of feeling these clothes or feeling like I'm taking up space. And then naturally what happens is that like those more charismatic attributes of self, those more playful attributes of self naturally come out anyways, but it's just through the permission of, ah, I'm just being me. That's it. Yeah. It's such an important point that performance, like now I'm dressed as a clown. Yes. Like that's what comes to mind when you're saying that now I'm like dressed as a performance artist because that's kind of how we when we take in kind of people dressing up that's kind of what comes to mind with like entertainment or something that I now have to like prove myself yes I have to back myself like I have to have something to say with this even that just is so interesting because I have felt like similar with my background in performing of singing and and kind of yeah being uh in front of audiences like and how ingrained that kind of started to seep into me then it was like yeah do I have to be this person all the time and giving myself permission when I'm feeling more introverted or you know, because I'm a gregarious person naturally, but I also have this kind of, no, I don't. I, I Sometimes I just want to be quiet. Mm. I don't want to have to, yeah, be the thing. And I, I think that that feels really important to say, like really, mm. really. Uh, yeah, you can 
be yourself and enjoy it and not have to then give another layer of yourself or mine yourself for someone else and I think that that also comes through with like how we are viewed as women that like the voyeur like people looking at us in a way to be like you need to be attractive you need to be Mm. sexy you need to give me something that I want you know and I know that that's something that I've had you know, and I've worked through many stories about like how the patriarchy views us as women and how we should be, how we should act, how we should look. Mm-hmm. Unraveling all of that because it's all intertwined, isn't it? We all have like a different um, relationship to that, depending on who we are. But we all have a relationship to this is how women should be. But now we are in this time on the planet we're starting to like really unravel that and be like hold on a minute identity is a big thing right now isn't it like who we are how we want to be perceived we can really um ask for that say actually this is how I want to be and it to be yeah much freer and that feels like my heart just (sighs) Mm. just feels grateful for where we are now because you know our ancestors before us have had really struggle with that and our and women before us of really being in the straight jackets of this is your identity we you're given an identity and you don't get to explore that absolutely I mean I feel like women of the ones that have been projected onto the most about what we're supposed to wear like <clears throat> you know we had to wear those uh, what were they called when they would tighten around the <laughs> yeah corset and then like wear all these like like wooden frames of your dress like just ridiculous things to look a certain way like who cares whether you're comfortable who cares whether you like any of it like this is what you have to do for the men and for society. And this is what a woman is. And I mean, even just like the, you know, covering the ankles. Right. And there's even in our generations now, it's like, you know, there's a certain age group that, you know, you can or can't wear supposedly, right. This, like you don't wear these things past a certain age or like I've come across in my own mind as a mother, like, Oh, what does a mother wear? Like, you know, I have belly shirts. Like, does a mother wear belly shirts? You know, can I expose my belly as a mother, you know, and just these ideas and projections that have been so heavy onto the feminine, And for the opportunity, the invitation for all of us just to really say, but what does, if you're a woman, what does my feminine desire, you know, how does she really want to express herself through clothing? I even had a client the other day, she said that she went shopping and she was with these two friends and she put on this thing and they were like, oh my God, that's so wonderful. You like, and they went off about it and she was like, ah, like this isn't me at all you know? And, you know, it was just like, I'm sure she looked beautiful in it, but to her, it wasn't that she didn't look good or that she didn't think she looked good. It just wasn't that feeling of like, ah, this feels so good, you know? And another one that comes to mind is I, if you've ever heard people say like, like, I remember for my wedding, I had a really big necklace on and the woman came up to me and she was like, oh, I just love that necklace. And you know, you can pull that off. I could never pull that off. And I was like, I didn't say anything, but I was like, well, anybody can pull it off if they want to pull it off. Like what even is that statement? Like, oh, that person pulls that off so well. Like they pull it off because they like it and it feels good to them. Like, you know, this idea that there, we have to be something in order to pull that off. Like that's a really- you just made me really laugh. Like I could laugh about that for a while because you're like, what does that mean? What does that mean? Pull it off. What? That doesn't even make sense, does it? If you break it down and pull yeah. it off. Actually, you're putting it on. You're not taking yeah, it off. Right. You can so put that on. So, oh my God, you put that on You put so that on good. so well. <laughs> That's better though. That's better because like 
mm. you're saying yes to the thing that you're doing rather than pull it off, which feels like a kind of negative thing. But yeah, that, yeah. that fascinates me that, that I always love to say to people, well, you, you know, let, let's, okay, you, what do you want to do right now? You're clearly seeing something in me that you're mm. desiring in yourself. So how can we like get that out of you? And I know that that's, that's something that, that women, we all get inspired by one another. And that's the beautiful thing about, you know, women when we can, <laughs> you know, be open and uh, supportive of one another is that we do inspire one another. And um, I love that conversation of, oh, I just love, you know, I love what you're wearing and I love that. And, you know, what do I want to wear? And just, just kind of really like, boosting each other up and celebrating our individuality and our identity and just really changing the narrative on tearing each other down as well which I Mm -hmm. feel a lot of energy into now um and working with women it's it's really powerful because you know we're all bringing you know newness freshness to how we interact with one another and it's so powerful because actually when women come together in openness and and with good intention, we lift each other up naturally. It's like we mm-hmm. multiply everyone's experience. And I really feel that and I've really experienced that and I really kind of want to remind everyone about that because we don't need to, you know, say that person pulls that off, but I could never. And yeah, exactly. what about seeing that person going oh I could you know that's me too mm-hmm. and then that's like we're raising each other and I just I'm so here for that I'm so here for that yeah and absolutely like using the reflection like if you see something that you think oh I really like that but I can't pull that off what if you were to go just try it on and then be really present with what you feel. Cause it's not to say that it is or isn't for you, mm-hmm. but like we can, like, there's so much there that if we just go, like I told a client recently, just like go and try on all different kinds of things. Right. And feel like, what does this style look like? What is this style? And what does it feel like when I'm in my body? And is there that self-rejection? Mm-hmm. Right. Or like, this is ridiculous. Who do I think I am? Because that goes along with that. Well, you pull it off. But if I put it on, oh my God, this is ridiculous. Who do I think I am? Like that isn't the love of self, right? That's not your heart speaking. That's not your soul speaking. That's the programming saying, you're not allowed to wear that. This isn't who you are. Knock it off. Stop it. And, you know, if you put that stuff on and you hear those voices, that's an opportunity to be like, I don't have to believe that doesn't mean again that you have to wear that, but like, you don't have to believe those voices that are saying you're ridiculous. Who do you think you are? You can't wear this. Yeah. And it's always so powerful to like go and try on a whole bunch of stuff, especially the stuff that you think that doesn't suit me. Yes. Because it's amazing. Actually, sometimes you think, well, that won't suit me. And then you put it on, you're like, oh, just to kind of throw out all the things that your brain is telling you basically and go with a kind of curiosity. And if you try it on and it doesn't suit you, fine. It doesn't suit Mm -hmm. you, but just to kind of keep the options open. Don't like limit yourself before you've even tried something. And I think that that is kind of what happens, isn't it, with our expression. And that's why art is such a powerful way into finding out what your expression is. Because you've got to get curious Mm -hmm. and play and, adventure and go down the path that maybe you haven't before because you're going to mine something you're going to mine some gold and and that's going to be really beautiful and yeah self-expression playing with your self-expression is what helps you to find out more about yourself and that is um yeah that is such a worthy and exciting adventure and journey to go on is finding out more about yourself because we just don't have that. We haven't had space for that unless we go find it ourselves. Not really. It's not been, you know, my experience 
as a woman, I've had to go find that. I've got I've had to go create that. Um, but there are lots more spaces like that now. Yeah, I feel like I feel like our entire society is shifting. I mean, just even with like the drag stuff and all of that, you know, there's there's a much more opportunity for people to express themselves through their clothing and through their identity. I even went through a time where, you know, I didn't, I was never really a makeup person because I didn't really wear makeup in high school. And then after high school, I traveled the world and was a scuba diving instructor. So I was just in the water all day long. <clears throat> and then kind of came back. I was so lost when I came back. And then, you know, this was several years ago. This was like in 2000. I just felt really strongly to wear eye makeup. And mm -hmm. like all of a sudden out of nowhere, it was like, I want to wear color eye makeup and like I didn't even know how to like apply that shit you know I had to like teach myself how to apply like several different colors and I was just like again like it was just really it like innate desire it didn't come from anything it was really in me and it was that creative energy that started to really wake up right and just saying like oh, no I want to express color on my face and I went through just like, oh, you, you know, again, you're a mother, you're like 40 years old. Who do you think you are? You can't wear these colors. And I had to like, keep like, okay, I want to wear color today. I want to put color on my face. And then just like feeling that ego attack, right? Myself, attack myself and keep taking steps and keep like, no, I, I, this feels right. This feels like honest it feels truly honest to who I am and now it's like no big deal I wear it all the time and it, you know it's not it's no longer charged I really really enjoy it I still spend a lot of time and put a lot of color onto my eyes but I had to get through this stage of like you're not allowed to wear color eyeshadow like it's so mm -hmm. ridiculous and yet it was like so deeply in me and, yeah. you know, I feel like awakening that creative nature of self is where, like you said, you all of a sudden want to wear more color, right? Mm -hmm. Like that color starts coming out and kind of these different expressions. And yeah, it takes some courage to be able to say yes to that, even though those voices, you know, and if somebody's ever experiencing that, you know, hopefully they have a, particularly a female friend, but just anybody, they can be like, okay, I really want to do this, but I'm scared, you know, and like, just need your support to be like, fuck yeah, do it. You're like, oh my gosh, let's do it together or whatever. You know, we need yeah. that sisterhood and that support to be like, absolutely do it. You're not too old. It's not inappropriate. Let's throw all of this bullshit out the door and just really give ourselves permission. What is that creative person inside of me? And how does she want to express via clothing and hair. That's another thing, right? Hair and all the yeah. different ways that we express our innate nature. Yeah, I love it all. And funny enough hair, I just like let my hair grow. So this was another kind of moment within me that was like, oh, I now wanna see how long my hair will grow without cutting it. Mm -hmm. Like after writing it's like mm -hmm. let's do an experiment and see how long my mm -hmm. egg can grow and just enjoy that process and kind of yeah. let go of you know oh you should cut it and you know whatever people say about like cutting your hair and how many times you should cut it and all these things and I just went no I'm just gonna let it grow and see how it goes and you know how long it can grow because I didn't even know how long it could grow because mm -hmm. I just kept kind of cutting it because that mm. I'm like no now I feel like I've let my like wild sort of mm. mane come back and there's this kind of connection with wisdom you know in the native mm. uh, mm -hmm. the native wisdom is that it's it's your wisdom and I've, I've really felt like I've been reconnecting with you know deeper parts of myself and I think that that's also in whatever way when we are exploring and um and enjoying um these things that may also seem like small or insignificant but they aren't they're really important yeah. <laughs> those tugs yeah. and pulls because we really find out more about ourselves and and it's fun and and not listening to the to the voices that just want to you know keep you small and just trying it like also in 
you know, for me, food as well. When I decided that I wanted to be vegan because my body was telling me, it was like, okay, let's explore that. When I stopped mm-hmm. drinking, okay, let's explore that. So it's just, it's just like really listening. And that mm-hmm. is a practice. And that is a practice that I've actively yes. chosen as one. You have to choose it for yourself of what am I really, you know, feeling right now what is my body saying and what is my my spirit saying what feels free what feels liberated outside of anyone else's ideas outside of anyone else's ideas so really what am I saying not what I think they want me to do or what they're telling me to do so it's very much a self-empowerment journey as well because then you realize oh I have been listening to other people over myself Mm mm-hmm like oh my mother said I shouldn't do this or Mm -hmm. that's not what you do if you do this it's like oh no I'm really listening to my rhythm I'm really going with my instincts I'm really following my path that is very inspiring as well Mm -hmm. yeah and I feel like it can be you know little things sometimes I think we we always think it always needs to be so grand or huge and it might be something really little that you just start saying yes to that changes it you know like I have these I was telling Gigi the other day I have these boots that I just love and I wear them all the time I have several pairs of boots that I wear all the time but you know and and they're all very like different but similar and it's like I can just be in yoga pants and a t-shirt or whatever. And I throw these boots on and I'm just like, ah, diggity damn, I'm sexy. You know, and it's like such a little thing. Right. And yet like, I totally, it totally changes how I feel. And I like the way that I feel when I'm in those boots. And of course, you know, our identity is not the boots, right? It's just the playfulness of how we are choosing to express, but it can be little It can be, it can be grand, you know, but it's, it's just, if the more times we are saying yes every day or yes, more often to whatever that is, then it starts to become more and more fluid. And I I always just say, it feels like home to me. It's like that, that realization of, of the authentic self. Yeah. Yeah. It feels so much like this is, this is truly me. Like I honestly didn't know who I was most of my life. I didn't have a strong identity. I didn't, I had no idea. I was so lost in who I was and just really feeling like, ah, this is who I am. And that creates space for other people to be who they are. Right. Cause like, I know who I am. So right. Great. You be you, right. You be you. Like, I don't need you to be anything different than you are. And if that's who you are, like fantastic. Like that realization and ownership of that authentic self creates space for other people to be their authentic selves and to take up space. Like, please, by all means, take up space. Come play with me in the massive space. Let's do yes. it more together. I just, yeah, I love it. The authentic self and really, because that word gets thrown around a lot, doesn't it? Just be authentic. Just be authentic. What does that like really mean? And I feel like, mm. yeah, that is how I root into my authentic self is listening to what I want to do and how I want to be. And even, you know, picking some flowers like really going into simple things if you see like some beautiful flowers that are growing around now at this time of year and just be like oh I just love flowers and then taking mm. time to pull over the car and pick some flowers that brings me so much joy those little mm. just bring more magic you know instead of going oh well no I can't be bothered or whatever it's like no I'm gonna I'm gonna follow those little you know excited flutters that I get when I'm like oh I like that Mm. and like you said it's it's very small but it adds up and then you start realizing that it's like you're unclogging a sort of funnel or something Mm. that keeps like locked up it's like oh I'll do that thing and then it leads me to this thing that's like breadcrumbs and then suddenly you feel like wow I feel so much more spacious just to be who I am because I'm choosing it and and I'm creating that for myself it's just 
yeah, I feel like this could be a kind of a really, really long and in-depth conversation, but it's beautiful to just kind of touch on all these things because it it feels like we're kind of moving energy and 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 inviting um yeah questions and and you ask yourself as well for those of you who are watching about some of the things we've talked about and is there something that you want to do or try out or express that has been calling to you and this can be your permission to to play with that yeah and and to play right because it doesn't mean that's who you are like I was just listening to somebody talk today and she was saying how therefore she had like a a moment what we call a phase right where she was like trying out all of the um, name brand things and it wasn't really like she never was called to that then all of a sudden she felt kind of called to it so she played in it for a little while and then she was done and you know it's not like oh, I've never done it, so I can't do it now. Or, well, now I'm doing it, so I have to maintain it, right? Like we can literally just play in it for a little while and be like, whatever, we're scratching that itch. And we don't have to understand what that itch means. Like it doesn't, this isn't linear. This isn't like, okay, first I move into this. And then after that, that's going to, it's like the itch is part of just the exploration of that authentic self. It may lead to seemingly nothing. Like if we were to look outside of how she evolved into that phase, and I've, I've done similar things of like these phases you could say, oh, well, that died off or that got dropped or that was just a phase, right? Like, and yet it's not just a phase. Like if you're, if that's the aliveness that's coming up and you're saying yes to that and you're moving through it until that aliveness is gone, that is such a massive proclamation and reclamation of yourself. Mm -hmm. The aliveness feel that aliveness oh my gosh and it's so true because we're so conditioned that we can't change and be changeful yes. and that is us really reclaiming the feminine within us it's just like fuck this this is part of who I am I get to express I get to play I get to get curious I get to do this without being pinned down as you said that that is now what I have to do now for the rest of my life yes that's who I am I bet now only I can only be this and, you know, that's really real as well, isn't it? That feeling like I've I've had that so many times in my life. Like, Oh, wait, I can't change now because I've said this and da, 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 da. And then we yes. go into a spiral. Um, so being able to work with our feminine and, and together as well, because we kind of go, oh, OK, yeah, we can do this as women. We can explore this and you no, know, we're not going to be shamed or, you know, rejected or um, mm. or just yeah told that that it's not it's not okay like mm -hmm. like in all of it or and and also how people you know like I mean I would say the big thing with with all of the change and like being messy and like okay I'm gonna move into this and I'm gonna do this you know people are like that makes them uncomfortable because they start to like okay this is who you are oh wait now you're changing again you know like you know, like I was called fickle or something like that by my mom once. And it was like, so what? Like be fickle, be whatever, be airy, be like whatever you want to be. If that's what, if that's where the aliveness is coming from, you know, it's as long as it's not like where you're running away or you're, you know, not staying committed to yourself, which is a different vibration that people will so easily like project onto us. No, but, but, uh, you know, wait a second. I, you, you just became this person. I just started to understand. I just started getting comfortable with that. And now you're like changing again. Right. Yeah. And that's their discomfort. Right. And you're not responsible for their discomfort. I think that's like, we take that on, don't we? We take yeah. on somebody else is uncomfortable with us changing. Yeah. Somebody else doesn't like the fact that once again, we're changing. I mean, the amount of times I've changed in my business and all of that has just been like insane. I think we probably, I mean, combined would be hilarious to know how many times that we've changed like in business and our like our play, but we've given ourselves so much permission, which is just, I yes. mean, it's I really feel like I found out so much because of that and because of not having that change shame around it and being like oh no like I shouldn't have done that and then we could go into despair and 
I mean, there is just so much around like owning, exactly owning like the aliveness and owning where we want to go and and not being pulled down by other people and other people getting, you know, other people's fear and just really kind of being true to ourselves is, oh, it's, it's big and it's, it's a journey but it's just very very powerful and beautiful and and rich and I do feel like the mess is so important to embrace and to realize that that is the truth of, of being a human <laughs> that there is no perfect way to be it's all messy yeah and I feel like the more you get the messy out of the way and the the changing out of the way, you start to anchor more and more into that authentic self. And then there tends to be more of a, a rhythm right within that. Mm -hmm. And not to say you won't change anymore because I think there is, it's a, a lifelong evolution, but I feel like my experience, I should say has been after I kind of got that like messy kind of all over the place, like, I don't know what I'm doing a lot, who I am, any of that then it starts to be like, oh, this is who I am. And yes, that's evolving, but the the essence really starts to just really deepen in that authentic self. So like the essence is remaining the same, right? Because your authentic self is, is your authentic self and mm -hmm. it will continue to evolve and unravel, but it starts to be, it starts to take on this, this essence of self that I feel like starts to carry forth in this, in this rhythm of evolution. Yeah, yeah, and that you can feel it, even if yes. the visuals are changing or whatever yes. on the surface. It's like it's a really strong, yes, like yes, vibrant. exactly. I feel that really, and and because it's strong because we've been messy. It's yes, strong and solid exactly. because we know we are going to come out of that mess into more of ourselves, and that's just like wow, that is. I suppose that the journey of life. Yeah. And this is something that, you know, all of like the geniuses do like the artistic geniuses, the science geniuses. I mean, they allow themselves to be messy. You know, they don't just like wake up and are perfect and do this. They, they allow that expression, that passion that passion is so strong that it keeps, it keeps them going forward, even though they're like, that didn't work or that was a failure or whatever. Like that passion is just like, and we have to keep going in this direction, you know, and that's what makes them eventually seen as a genius or realized, but you know, it would be so beautiful to really see what was in their past and what yeah. did they move through that was super messy that, that, that passion just kept saying, it's okay. Just let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Just keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. And I think it's so important for all of us to recognize that passion in ourselves and, and connect to it. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's beautiful. What a great conversation. And um, yeah, like, like we both said, if you feel called to share or ask questions or just, you know, open up the space for this, playful discussion because I feel like we always learn so much from one another as well as women so Absolutely. thank you so much yay Mwah.